Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watch You Want, and thanks for logging on. Today, we're looking at the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Dual Time Reference 26120ST, 39mm in brushed and polished stainless steel. This is the look of the classic 39mm steel Audemars Piguet Royal Oak, but enhanced by a host of practical and legible complications that define the face of Audemars Piguet's answer to the Vacheron Constantin Overseas Dual Time, and more recently, the Patek Philippe Aquanaut 5164 travel time. Now you can see the best part of this watch is that it starts off on the right foot. The fit is classical Audemars Piguet Royal Oak 39 millimeters, which is to say that it reads as all of a piece. It's comfortable, planted, ergonomically fine on the wrist, and it gives you the sense that you're wearing a larger watch than its nominal 39 millimeters would suggest. 39 millimeters strikes me as the smaller side of the spectrum for a sports watch, but it doesn't read as such because the integration of the lugs and the bracelet cause it to appear larger, splayed out, again, all of a piece like a bracelet. Gerald Genta, who designed the watch, was a jewelry designer first and foremost, and when I review an Audemars Piguet Royal Oak on a traditional bracelet, I like to emphasize that he wanted the watch to read as a bracelet. Watches were his secondary business, so when he designed them, he designed them with a jewelry designer's mentality. And sure enough, this watch does read as a fully integrated component, something that is inevitably, logically, all of a piece, and although it took a genius to envision it, any observer can appreciate it. And the bottom line is, on the wrist, it feels a treat. You can see only 10.3 millimeters thick. Although it is an automatic winding watch with a multiple complication module on the top of the movement, it's really almost an ultra-thin, considering the degree of complexity. Now, it does sort of nestle into the wrist, so it doesn't even sit 10 millimeters above the skin, but even the part that does, and you can see the classical hand-polished Royal Oak beveled bezel, has a little bit of tumble home, so a long sleeve can easily slide up and over it. A dress cuff, no problem, right up and over. Aesthetically, the combination of a white metal and a dark dial is going to work with casual or formal attire, but ergonomically, the watch also works with long sleeves or short, so you're good to go there. Part of the comfort of this watch is the bracelet, but it's also down to the finishing of the bracelet. Now, many watchmakers do a integrated bracelet these days, but AP, with over 40 years in the game, as one of the first, if not the first, to ever attempt this style of aesthetic integration, has managed to create a hand-finished bracelet that wears almost like a piece of silk. It has the souplesse and the comfort of a nice soft calfskin strap. And the key there is these large hand-finished channels between the links on the underside. Everything is smooth. There are no burrs, there are no sheer edges or sharp or hard edges. But it's that channel that allows hair, that allows a little bit of skin to tuck in between the links without ever getting pulled or pinched. Again, experience counts. So does love, care, and craftsmanship, and AP has all of these in spades. You're getting a lot more than a classic look with this watch. You're getting a lot of human input. And the same fact holds true for the clasp. Now, those who are familiar with the Offshore and its deployant AP logo are going to recognize the style here, because the same motif is at play, but miniaturized and in the form of a double deployant, double swing arm, twin trigger release clasp, far superior to the old sliding AP trigger, which was a good piece but a little bit delicate. The double deployant with the twin triggers is nevertheless just as well finished, and you can actually see the finish in triplicate, sandblasted at center, brushed and then polished on the links and on the flanks of the clasp. It is a low profile piece that reads as part of the bracelet. It doesn't stick its head up and make itself noticed the way a pure sports watch clasp would, and yet very secure, very solid, beautifully finished even when open. That's the attention to detail that Audemars Piguet puts into every piece of a Royal Oak bracelet and clasp. But it is the dial that defines a Royal Oak. It is the bezel, the dial, the composition of the two that really screams AP Royal Oak and makes this watch instantly recognizable as a Royal Oak. Moving inward, from the octagonal bezel designed to resemble an old Royal Navy porthole on a battleship. You can see the inset white gold bezel bolts, bolts as they have been since the original 1972 model, but the departure takes place on the dial itself. Still the Grand Tapisserie design, so a hobnail cut on a vintage style pantograph machine, 
and this model, having been sold in 2009, still features the Stern Creations built dial. AP took them in-house in 2012. This one was built by Stern Creations, and yes, for traditionalists, we are talking about those Sterns. They have Patek Philippe, and the cut is classic. It has enough texture to add visual interest in between the applied elements and the inset subdials, but it also has a rich blue color to it that in combination with the white metal is just stunning. I love the look of it. I love that splash of subtle dark color. And in contrast with the small red elements on the power reserve and the date, it just jumps. It pops to me. The combination of white, red, and blue is striking. I, I believe it's perfectly suited to the understated character of the watch, nevertheless visually arresting. And likewise, the arrangements of the complications here that define the dual time are visually arresting, and AP accomplishes it with a studied asymmetry. Although they are splayed at semi-regular intervals around the cannon pinion, the hands at center, the subdials themselves are not perfectly symmetrical. At 6 o'clock, you have the second time zone with its overlapping AM-PM indicator. At 2 o'clock, you have the date wheel. And then, opposed to it, right about at... 9.30, you have a power reserve with a separate cutout, the arcing shape contrasting with the round shapes, the overlapping combined, uh, contrasting rather with the individual pieces on each side. No two are exactly the same, and their somewhat uneven placement captivates the mind. Sometimes when a dial is too symmetrical, when it's too perfectly balanced, you look at it and you say, oh, well, that's nice, but then your attention moves on. This grabs and holds the mind because the mind continues to try to resolve that asymmetry. It's just in our nature as people, it's in the nature of the mind to try to resolve imbalances. And AP uses that technique artistically and psychologically to good effect to add serious visual impact with this Royal Oak dual time dial. Beautifully done in terms of color and composition. All applied elements, our indices, AP, all the hands, white gold, high polished. The dial is lightly loomed, so it's visible at night. Now, the watch features a suitably upscale high horology power plant. It's the AP Caliber 2329 with a 2846 module. It's based on the Jeger LeCoult Caliber 889. So, 4 Hz or 28,800 vibrations per hour, 38 hour power reserve, 261 parts, 33 joules. The whole thing, in spite of automatic winding, the base movement, and the complicated module on top, is still only 4 millimeters thick, which is outstanding. Also, very fine, it does have stop seconds, so when you pull the crown, it will stop the balance, so you can set the watch precisely. Even though it doesn't have a small seconds hand, AP understands that being able to hack a watch that is precise by nature, by its engineering, by its adjustment, is important to connoisseurs, even if the seconds hand isn't visible. And that's one of those refinements, one of those marks of integrity that really speaks highly of the manufacturer. But there's more here, because this being a more recent variant of the JLC 889, it incorporates a lot of the so-called auto tractor refinements that Jezier LeCoult pioneered in the early 2000s, and began putting into its customer calibers in the second half of the 2000s. So I'm talking about more efficient unidirectional winding, maintenance-free, unlubricated, high-efficiency, sealed-for-life ceramic winding rotor bearings, and a free-sprung escapement that's both more durable and less likely to be induced to variation by shocks to the watch. So you get a lot of upscale modern refinements in a watch that is traditionally wrought and executed. It's the best of both worlds. Modern technology, traditional hand finish, and I can't overemphasize that the beauty and the value of a Royal Oak is in the finishing of the case components. The bezel, the case, and the lugs, and every link individually of the bracelet. There's a reason that watch refinishers consider this watch to be one of the most diabolical to restore to factory finish, and that's because so much hand work goes into it. After the machines are turned off, a hand, hand tools, cloths, compounds, that's how you get these beautiful beveled edges. That's how you get the beautifully soft, smooth, satin-like finish between the links that agrees so well with human skin. That's how you get these polished and regular edges on the bezel. That's how you get these tapering, diminishing camphors along the hoods of the case. The value of this watch is in the human blood, sweat, and tears that define its shape and its character. And if that sounds like the watch you want, you can see this Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Dual Time on our website, Watch You Want.